Action, I guess. <laughs> Action works for me. <laughs> All right, so uh, welcome. Uh, we have Alan Clement with us today, and uh, he was with us on our flash tent, and actually we really enjoyed it, enjoyed it, and wanted to actually get you in depth into how do you get started with FDT five. So welcome, Alan, and thanks for joining me in the session. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, flash tent was a really fun event. I'm glad you took the time to to host it up and there's some really good content and you had some really good speakers for it. Ah, thank you. And uh, obviously your session was a big hit as well. Um, and we brought you here really today because we want to give a taste to our members that decide to use FDT to actually know how to get started. And just for ge in general, for people that are getting started, how do they actually get started? Um, and that's really all the intro we need for this, I think. And one of the, one of the stuff, obviously, that we want to start is with how do we actually get the application to run? So I first I I installed FTT five and uh, it requested me to install the Air SDK. And for who of us that don't know what the F Flex SDK is, could you give us a bit of a background what that actually is and why do we have to add it into FTT? Yeah, that's actually. Um... It's actually a really good question because a lot of people do ask us ask us about that. Mm -hmm. um, it all comes with the fact that uh, you know some years ago uh, Adobe decided to post the Flex SDK as open source, mm -hmm. and what that means is that means that um, things like the Flex framework, which a lot of people use for enterprise applications, all that source code is up there and that's easy to distribute. And they also include that because it is an, an SDK, a software development kit. It also includes the compiler, which is MXMLC, and also some additional uh, tools, like, for example, tools for creating Swift libraries, uh, generating AS docs, and some other tools for generating um, Air applications. Cool. So is it basically connected to based on the version of Flash you want to compile into, you need to have the right for version of the SDK? Yeah. Yeah, there there is a dependency between uh, the later Flash, the latest Flash player versions, and uh, the latest SDK. Like for example, uh, at the time that we're recording this, uh, four point mm -hmm. six was just released, mm -hmm. and I believe that will have um, either Flash player eleven dot one or eleven dot two. Do you know offhand which one just came out? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, two or dot three because I'm part of their, um, you know, behind the scenes yeah, version. Yeah. It's kind of hard to follow all the different numbers. But uh, so, but with that, so if I have the, if I install the four dot six right now, does that mean I could only install for the Flash Player eleven dot two or whatever it is, or it, do I have to have basically a different compiler, a different uh, SDK version for every uh, version? If I want to publish to Flash ten, or I want to publish to Flash eleven. Um, do I need to know what SDK goes with what, or is it just have the latest SDK and you can compile to all? Uh, you'll be able to uh, compile down. Okay, cool. So by the way, so why did you, you in your uh, in the first error that I got when I installed it, or the first request was to install the four dot five and the well, that was the video that you made four dot five and right. three six. Why do I need both? Uh, that's because that there is a, a difference mostly with the Flex SDK itself. Adobe made a uh, a big jump from Flex 3 to Flex 4, and so they developed both versions of the Flex. Now, again, when I talk about Flex, I'm talking about the Flex framework. Mm -hmm. um, they did develop those in parallel for a little bit as a little transition, but now the Flex 3.6 is the last version of Flex 3. Oh, okay, and and with the, uh, I know this is a long intro, but with that 3.6, what um, what do I get with the 3.6 that I wouldn't get with the 4.6 or vice versa? Uh, it will have if you just do a a straight um, compiling with the three dot six, you'll mm -hmm. be able to. Uh, it only goes up to I believe Flash Player ten or ten dot two uh -huh. maybe. Uh -huh. um, but if you want to do the more latest stuff, then you'll need the four dot five SDK. Oh, uh, okay. So it's basically to give me that spectrum of publishing to older versions of Flash and newer versions of Flash. Yeah, but uh, but more specifically, um, Flash uh, the Flex framework. Uh huh. Interesting. So it's different components that are available for different versions of the Flash Player. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, it's it's actually not so much depending on the Flash Player. It's the Flex framework itself, and they really you know they move things around and uh, and they did make some subtle adjustments uh, behind the scenes for like the debugger that we've had to make some changes to. Um, but that's you know, I would say that for ninety nine percent of the people out there. Just download the latest Flex SDK 
and mm-hmm. use that and you'll be fine. Okay, cool. So let's let's do that. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. So <laughs> the stage is yours, Alan. Right, right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start up FTT for the first time. Yeah. And uh, the reason why we used to ship uh, the Flex SDKs with FTT, uh, but now we don't because uh, you know there are some some licensing issues there. I see. Because uh, it's not you know it's uh, there are some parts that you have to you know download yourself and and install yourself. So we can't ship everything with the FTT according to the um, Adobe Open Source license. However, I will say that this will probably change dramatically because now uh, Adobe is pitching it to the Apache Foundation. Right. That sounds kind of cool. So so, yep. we're, so we're probably going to have a different way of, of distributing SDKs in, in a nice way. But right now, uh, when you download FTT, it does not have the SDKs bundled with it. Which is kind of cool because then the users could pick what SDKs they want and they could update it whenever they want. Yeah, to. Th- th- that's true. We always had uh, a – it was kind of back and forth for us. We would have – um, some users complain like, oh, why do you have to download FTT? It's like 400 megabytes, you know, when FTT itself is only like, I think like 30. Right. And they'd be like, oh, why did, I don't want to download this stuff. I just want to download FTT and I don't have to deal with the SDKs. And then on the other side, some people would say, hey, you know, I want everything all set up for me from the get go, et cetera, et cetera. Isn't it the same people that uh, ask you to come personally to their house to show you how to get it to work? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's it's. I do like the idea of just downloading and then going. So I will say uh, that I like I like just like um with my really limited uh, knowledge of uh, Eclipse of the, the the that capability of writing in some sort of source path and then having updates to different things. I'm I know I'm probably speaking completely randomly, but um I remember when uh. Even with FDT, when you're working with Eclipse, you go somewhere and just add a FDT source path or something like that, and then it updates your Eclipse to have FDT. You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So why doesn't that capability incorporate also with the Adobe um, SDK? Is that because Adobe has to give the support for it, and you're not allowed to actually provide it because it's not yours? It's Adobe's SDK, and they just chose not to create that um, auto updater. Um, we it's. Again, it's it's getting into the uh, technicals of, of licensing, as as you were saying before. So it's all it's all kind of uh, sticky and hairy. So uh, I think you know right now it's it's totally separate. But when we go over to the Apache, I think we'll probably have some some better ways of uh, having having better experience. Last word about that: if if someone wants to complain about that to Adobe, what's the email? To com- I'm kidding. Yeah, no, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, so cool. So fair enough. So let's see how we actually do it. It's not such a big deal. It's just no. Uh... No. Okay. So this is what happens. You've opened FTT for the first time, mm-hmm. and it's asking you for the SDKs. Mm-hmm. And so all you have to do is now I've already downloaded the Flex uh, 3.6 and 4.5 SDK. It's uh, or yes, and 4.6 SDKs. Uh, you can go get those at Adobe Open Source. You just go there. It says. Yeah, you be able to find the URLs. You probably can flash it on the screen right now in ScreenFlow, of um, of where to go, and, cool. to, and 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 to check it out. And uh, it'll just give you a zip to download. And then you just plop that uh, anywhere you want. You actually see it uh, when I browsed it right here. Cool. And we'll we'll drop that link also on our website when we're done with uh, creating the video, so it's easier for you yeah. guys to find it. All right. Totally. All right, so we've got this window that pops up telling you that the SDKs are missing. Now this is for the first time you're running FTT. And uh, you haven't set this up. This only will show once. Or if you know that you don't want to have anything to do with the SDKs, you can click this button here, and and it'll it'll never warn you again. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm gonna hit, click OK, and then here it's telling me that um, you know make sure the SDKs are not found, and this is showing me the preference window where I need to add the SDKs. So I'm gonna click on Add. Did that automatically happen? Then? Yes, it did. Oh, very yeah. cool. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna click on the directory here. And oh, here you, I see you already have the uh, 4.6 SDK. So let's actually stick with the 4.5 for right now. Mm-hmm. It's okay. This is actually one I already had downloaded before. So right now okay. it's it's just scanning the Swix and making sure everything is is um, is valid within there and all the valid paths are there. Fair enough. And that everything is kosher. Yeah, everything's kosher. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So there's that, and now see here it's again telling me the problem is that with the uh, the 3.5 SDK now is not in here, so I need to add add that guy real quick. So it's I'm sorry the 3.6. 
Good all right. stuff. Yeah, so that's it. So that's all you have, you have to do actually to get uh, up and running and making sure that you have the SDKs properly installed. Mm-hmm.